Hey guys and welcome to the 6th video in our WS Python series here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the radio button widget. Okay, so it's a pretty important widget, pretty basic but pretty important. Okay, so if you don't already know what the radio button is, now the radio buttons are typically used in a pair of groups. Okay, now the purpose of the radio button is to basically present to the user a bunch of options. Okay, each radio button presents one option to the user. Okay, so let's say you have three radio buttons, okay? The user can only select one of these, okay? This is in contrast to something like a checkbox, which the user can select multiple of, okay? But in radio buttons, which are basically grouped together, like three radio buttons in a group, okay? Only one of them can be selected, okay? You can't select more than one radio button at any given point, okay? That's basically a radio button, okay? So, here I'm going to go and begin writing our code. So, self dot, or let's just go with it normally, okay? I'll write rb1 is equal to wx dot radio button, okay? And what is the parent going to be? Self dot panel. And what is the label going to be? Let's just pick something generic like option 1, okay? and a pause can be 50 by 50 okay now this is one radio button okay there isn't any point in making just one okay so I'm, we're going to make several okay we'll make three in total now once they're all made what we need to do is group them together okay we need to basically tell the wx python code that they're all part of one group okay so then the wx python code will realize oh okay this is one group so amongst these three variables, amongst these three radio buttons, I mean, only one of them can be selected, okay? And don't worry, I'll elaborate more on this as we proceed. I'm just going to copy this for now, okay? Just make a few changes, okay? Change the label a bit, change the position a bit, and here we go. So here we have three radio buttons, option one, option two, and option three. But look at this, There's, they're already grouped, okay? Because I can only select one of them at any given point. How is this possible? Where did this happen? Because I never told WX Python that these three were part of a group, okay? So the thing is that the default style, actually not the default style, what actually happens is that WX Python will implicitly use this style. It's called wx.rb underscore group. Okay, so if I basically run this code, it's going to have the same effect. Okay, just watch. You see, because WX Python will automatically use this if it detects that you didn't use any grouping style. Okay, so if you create three radio buttons without any styles, basically WX Python will automatically group them for you. Okay, but what's really happening is that we need to use this style. Okay. This style is going to basically say that every ready button that comes after this ready button is going to be part of its group. Okay, now let's just test that theory out. I'm going to take this one and put it back here. And I'm not sure what's going to happen entirely, but um, let's just see. Okay, so we have option one there. Now let me try clicking option two. Okay. Okay, yeah, so we put option three back up there, didn't we? We put radio button 3 up there. So the thing is that radio button 3 is now its own group. And option 1 and 2 are their own group. Okay? So I hope you understood that because this is basically how the grouping is working. Okay? Now let me just do one more thing to try and really cement this concept of how the groups are made. Okay? What if I want to make two groups? Okay? What if I want to make two groups? Okay? How do I do that? Well, basically, I just copy this over here, right? And what I'm going to do is just call the style here as well, okay? wx.rb underscore group, okay? So basically what happens here is that when this line is detected, or more specifically, when this style is detected, it says, okay, every ready button that comes after this is going to be in the group belonging to rb1. So basically these two are a part of this group. But once you got over here, this has its own group style, okay? It's also, you know, it also has a style for wx.rb underscore group. 
So what, what WX Python does is create a new group. So once you reach this point, we end up with another group. Okay. And let's just change the positions on this a bit, just a little bit. And let's just change the names. Okay. And change these over here. Okay. Now watch. Come on. All right. Uh, not too good. We got to change these positions a bit. Okay. So here, these are two independent groups. Okay. You see, this is basically how you create several different groups in WX Python for radio buttons. Okay. So every time you want to create a new group, every time you want to basically say, okay, that's it. Uh, I don't want to make any more uh, radio buttons in the previous group. You just call this style over here. Okay. So this is a group one and this is group two. Okay. And if I kept making radio button widgets down here, they would be part of group two until I used this style. Okay. By default, we have the style equipped. Okay. Which is WX dot RB underscore single. Okay. This is the default style. Okay. You know, single radio buttons. Actually, hold on, hold on. I made a slight mistake. Uh, that's actually not the, the default style. Now that I think of it, basically what uh, RB underscore single does is that it declares it as a separate widget, a single radio button. I just remembered that. Okay, so let me just try this out. Let's just try this out in front of us and see what it does. So if I make each one of these RB single, what happens? Let's see. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed is that none of them are selected. Okay, so let me click on option one. Let me click on option two. Let me click on option three. Okay, look at that. You see that they're all independent radio buttons now. I can't select them anymore once they're selected. I can't deselect them, okay? Because you can't deselect a radio button. You can only choose to select something else. For example, let's take a look at this group two over here. Can I click on option four and deselect this radio button? No, I can't, okay? It's not gonna work. What I can do is click on option five to move the selection to option five, but each of these are now their own basic groups. So we now have four groups in total, option one, option two, option three, and option four, six. There are now four groups. Okay. That's actually how these two styles work. Okay. It's a bit misleading. Uh, you might think initially that, uh, well, whatever. Okay. I hope you guys understood this. I hope you guys understood how the styling works. Okay. And let's move on to the methods now, the functions. Okay. They're pretty simple. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete this group here. I'm also going to go ahead and delete this style. Okay. Because we don't need that anymore. And then what I'm going to do is basically bind all of these to the event for radio buttons. Okay. So what I could do is rb1.bind. And what else? Bind takes two parameters, wx dot event underscore radio button. Okay, slight typo there. Okay, and the second one is going to be the function that you want called once this event is detected. Okay, so I'll call the function something like on click. Okay, and I'll go down here and actually define that function on click. And this takes two parameters, self, you know, that's a compulsory, and e because that's the parameter that the event system in WX Python passes in. Okay, it's also something that you need to add. So what I'm gonna do here actually is actually use this event object. Okay, because what I want to do here is create a function that whenever we, whenever we click a radio button, it can be any radio button. Okay, if you click any radio button out of these three, what I want is that a function is gonna be called which prints out the label on that radio button. Okay, pretty simple, right? So I'll do something really nice, really handy. I'll do e dot get event object. If you haven't seen this before, what it does is that it returns the object that triggered the event. If I click on radio button one, this is going to return radio button one. If I clicked on radio button two, 
this is going to give me radio button 2 okay so now imagine that i've clicked on radio button 2 and i want to print out the value of radio button 2 okay print out uh, its value so i'm going to do print and i'm going to do rb dot get value or actually i want to print out the label first okay let's print out the label first and then let's print out its value okay so something like this okay and rb dot get value okay let's just see how this looks okay i just realized something i've only actually binded one of these to the event and the function so let's do it for the other two okay good now let's go over here come on run okay here we go so i'm going to click on option two now okay slight problem okay okay i understand what's going on because what basically is going on here that get value is returning a string sorry a bool okay a boolean value we need to convert that to a string you can also use string formatting over there which is actually more appropriate okay i'm just a bit used to concatenation so i'll click on option two now and there you go we have option two printed out which is the label and its current value is true okay and come to think of it all of these are going to be true because whenever we click them they're true okay but if i printed out the values of the other two they would be false okay so yeah basically this is how it works this is how events in radio buttons work okay it's a pretty simple thing okay this is how you print out values this is how you get the values from people okay and yeah that's pretty much it there are a few more things a few more methods that you can take a look at uh they have something to do with the grouping actually like you can get the first radio button that's in the group you can get the last one that's, that's in the group stuff like that but that's a bit extra stuff so i'll leave that for the website you can go there and check out the extra functions and whatever there's some extra detail detail over there some code over there you can go check that out okay if you want to uh, but other than that we're done for this video and in the next one we'll take a look at the radio box now if by any chance you thought that this is a bit difficult okay that you think that this is a bit difficult to have to go and create so many radio buttons individually if you don't like this you'll like the radio box for sure okay because the radio box is a very easy way of creating multiple um multiple radio buttons in a proper group okay and come to think of it there's one more thing that i think i can show you guys okay a more convenient way of handling things let me do self.panel.bind and i'm gonna bind this to the radio button okay the radio button and then i'll bind it to the function okay now watch this should have the same effect okay yep there you go same effect why is this well because the radio buttons are in the panel okay so if i just bind the panel to the radio button event every time i click the radio buttons it's also going to work okay the only slight issue with this is that if you have two groups in one uh, panel and you want different behaviors for both of them then you'll run into problems okay so you can either create a separate panel for each radio button group or you'll need to bind each one of them individually or of course you can just check out the radio box in the next video okay so that's it for now and i'll see you guys in the next video make sure to subscribe and so you don't miss anything and yeah that's pretty much it later